Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming out with a weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me show the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in monogram canvas. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's do your workout, let's go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today and lots of eye candy as well. Uh, all right, so starting with the first question from Baby Sonographer 98 Curious how you actually do your wish list. Is it in your head, written down on a list, or on your phone? Do you keep pics of the items? I feel like my list is changing multiple times throughout the year as I learn more about an item, such as if it'll work for me or not, and as new items come in, sometimes it gets confusing. Sometimes my list is short, sometimes it's longer. Just curious how you keep it all straight. Uh, this is an awesome question, and we've talked about the never-ending wish list before, and um, do I keep it in my head, written down, or on my phone. Well, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I keep them in all three places. I have it in my head for the most part. I have it written down and I also have it on my phone. It does make it a little bit easier to be able to delete items and add items onto it. And uh, it can get crazy. Like you said, sometimes when you have those new collections come up or you see new colors uh, come out, you're just like, oh man, I really like this. I really like that. And I also like to have pictures of them. Um, I know that <laughs> I know that it might sound kind of excessive and it might sound kind of ridiculous to some people to have, you know, pictures or to have it uh, or to have the list in multiple places, but it does end up helping me out. You know, it kind of, um, in a way, almost kind of keeps my eyes on the prize. I try not to, you know, kind of, um, uh, what's it called? I try not to get distracted by other items. I know it's very difficult with uh, you know with Instagram and with YouTube where as you see new items come up it can always get you know super crazy but for the most part I try to just zero in I'm like okay I'm looking at it's looking back at me type of thing I don't know but it's almost like a wish board that I have you know with the items that I would like to add to my collection and just kind of like you as I start to learn more about it or as I start to see like wear and tear videos I start to take away from it but um, it definitely helps in my opinion to have it in certain <laughs> in, um, not certain, in numerous places. Uh, so that way it, um, I don't know, maybe makes it easier to, um, to stay focused on those items. But I am curious, how do you guys do your wish list? Do you guys have a wish board? Do you guys have it on your phone? Do you have it in your head? You know, where do you keep it? And, um, you know, when new products come in or when new collections come in, um, how do you guys end up juggling those things out? I would love to know if you would like to share in the comment section down below. The fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Suzy Q, which would you recommend? The Alma BB or the Speedy Bandolier 25? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I do get this question asked quite often. All right, so here I have the Speedy Bandolier 25 in the monogram canvas, and here is the Alma BB in the Damien Ben canvas. I love, love, love both of these bags. You guys know this, but between the two, for the simple fact that it comes with an adjustable strap, I'd have to give it to the Speedy Bandolier 25. That adjustable strap is a major, major game changer. It makes it that much more versatile because you can use it as a crossbody. You can use it on your shoulder. You can shorten it up. Whatever you want to do, you have a lot more play with this one. You know, and I know that you can end up getting another strap for this, but then you're adding more money on top of the bag. So just the way that they come, this one has a lot more versatility to it. Here they are side by side. This one also fits a little bit more. And uh, don't get me wrong, I think that this is a wonderful, wonderful bag and don't let the size fool you either because even though it is small, it definitely packs a punch. But the fact that it does come with that one size fits all type of strap where you can adjust it kind of is what it is, um, doesn't really make it, um, it doesn't make it very user friendly, if you know what I'm saying, you know? So uh, between the two, I think that they're both wonderful, but hands down. I'd have to go for this little guy, the Speedy Bandolier 25. <laughs> so fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. All right, now the next question was actually a video suggestion, but I thought it was really great and I wanted to throw that out there just in case you guys were wondering the same thing. Uh, but this is from Ms. JM. I'm thinking of selling my toiletry pouch 26 and getting the Nice BB in its place. I know that they are quite different. I only use my TP26 for makeup slash toiletries for travel, not as a clutch or anything of that sort. Like I said, I think that this is great. Um, now the toiletry pouch 26 and the Nice BB, I think both of them are, um, are incredible pieces. Uh, but if I had to choose one strictly for travel purposes, hands down, it would end up being the Nice BB. I love this little guy. 
and uh, what I like about it is the fact that you do have the dual zippers. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to uh, to open up, uh, but like I said before, you have the dual zippers, and I love the fact that you have so much more space in here. You can see everything at a glance, uh, but for the most part, this area right here, there's been times when I've been able to carry my toiletries, no problem, and some of my hubbies, uh, so just the space on the Nice BB is great. It's able to fit in your carry-on, no problem, in your luggage, no problem. It doesn't take up too much space either. So I think it's great. And uh, with the toiletry pouch as a um, as a travel uh, accessory, I mean, I love it, don't get me wrong, I think it's great. I personally prefer it more as a clutch, just because when it comes to the toiletries, there's only, or with the TP26, there's only so much space that you have to the point where after you kind of fill the bottom, you start having to put items on top of each other. So if you want to get to the item on the bottom, you have to take the stuff out on top. So it can be quite fussy, I would imagine, as a toiletry. Um, these are just my two cents. I know some people use them for travel and they, they love them. But between the two, if I had to choose, absolutely I would end up going for the Nice BB. So um, I think that this is a great, great little guy and it could be small. I mean, it looks like it's a little bit deceiving, I guess, but uh, you can get away with fitting a lot, a lot in here. So for travel, absolutely, hands down, I would recommend that one. So I don't know if that's helpful, but uh, fantastic video suggestion. Hopefully I was able to give you a little bit of information. Next question from Garada Patone. Hopefully I said that correctly. I'm working up to get my first Chanel. The two bags I'm interested in are the classic flap, the black with gold hardware and caviar leather, and the GSD shopping tote, black with gold hardware. I had the opportunity to see, feel, and touch the classic flap and Chanel this summer, but I have never seen the GST. I'm wondering if you love it. Would you recommend it over the classic flap? I already have two flap bags from other fashion houses, but I don't have a tote. Also, is the GST heavy? Do the straps stay on your shoulder? Does it wear well? Is it practical for a five foot two petite woman as an everyday bag? I don't need a work tote. I want to use it as a purse. Um, all right, so that we have a little bit more eye candy, here is my GST in the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. Uh, all right, first one is, do I love it? Absolutely, I love this bag. It's actually one of my forever bags. Um, I think, I don't know, there's just something about it. Maybe it's because I am a tote girl, like through and through, you guys know how I feel about them, uh, that there's just something very special about this bag. Um, all right, would I recommend it over the classic flap? I don't know, <laughs> that's kinda hard, because as I just said, I am a tote girl through and through. Um, between the two, I think that, I think that you can dress them both up and down, no problem. You can wear them with like t-shirt and jeans, um, or you can wear them in a very um, formal setting. But I will have to say that out of the two, I find that this one is a little bit more casual. Don't you think so? Maybe it's because it is a tote, because it is open, I have no idea. But, um, or maybe it's because of the CC that kind of adds to how casual it is. I know some people think it's very tacky. Personally, I think it's one of the best details that it has. Um, but yeah, I think that this one is just a tad more casual and would I prefer it over the classic flap? I don't know. To be completely honest with you, I'm not gonna BS you guys because <laughs> I don't think I could decide for the life of me. I like them both for different reasons. Um, and both of them are in my forever bag, so <laughs> I am absolutely no help with that question. Um, all right, and um, is the GST heavy? Um, it can get heavy at times because it is an all leather handbag, uh, so sometimes if you end up fitting a little bit more in there, you will end up feeling the weight, but because it does have uh, this leather part on the straps, I find it to be very comfortable even when you do have a little bit more with you. And, okay, what's the other one? Does it wear well? I personally think that it has worn incredibly well. I've had this bag for four years? Five? Five years, I think? Something like that. Um, and yeah, I think it's worn very, very well. But one thing to know when it comes to the GST, they are... Um, they are known for sagging on the sides. So as time goes by, the more and more that you use it, or if you end up uh, fitting a lot more in here on a daily basis, you'll end up seeing the sagging on the sides here. Uh, so there's one side and here's the other. As you can see, it's starting to sag a little bit, not too, too bad. Like I said, for the amount of time that I've had it, I think it's worn very, very well. And when I first got it, I used this thing to death. So the caviar, um, I think has been, uh, has been really, really great. And uh, what was the other one? 
is it practical for a five foot two petite woman as an everyday bag? Um, I think so. I am five foot five and I don't find it to be too overwhelming. Um, I do like this size versus the extra large. The extra large, you can end up fitting a lot more in there. Uh, but this one I think would be great, definitely, as an everyday bag or even in the event if you ever wanted to use it as a work tote. I know that's something that uh, you said you didn't want to do, but if you wanted to, uh, it also serves a little bit uh, to be a little bit more versatile that way as well. So I think it's a great, great bag. Um, some people aren't crazy about it, like I said before, because of the double CCs, they find it to be kind of tacky, <laughs> but uh, I, I think it's great. And the fact that you can see everything at a glance and you also have that center divider makes it a little bit easier. So I am all for it. I know some people all also aren't a fan because it doesn't have any feet, but uh, even without the feet, there's, uh, there's no issues down there either. So I don't know if that's helpful or not. I think both of them are incredibly beautiful bags. And um, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't decide between the two if I, would, if I would end up going for a GST over a classic flat because I am, <laughs> I am absolutely useless when it comes to that question. So I don't know if the, uh, the pointers or the details that I gave you are able to help you, but uh, good luck deciding, but fantastic question. Next question from DJLJB. I'm thinking about getting a Mon Mono Neverfull. Instead of getting my initials, I would like to use the first letter of my children's names. After all, it's mainly their stuff that I towed around. Do you think that this is a good idea? Are you still loving your Mon Mono Speedy? Uh, all right, so that we have a little bit more eye candy, here is my classic Speedy 30 in the Mon Mono, and the colors are uh, in fuchsia and in blanc. Uh, and do I think it's a good idea? Absolutely I do. I think that's great, you know, especially because it adds even more personalization to the Mon Mono, you know, because most people end up going for their initials, but the fact that you're gonna put your kiddos uh, initials on there, I think it is absolutely fantastic. I think that it makes it even more special. And am I still loving my Speedy? I do, I still love this bag. I don't use it as often um, as I used to. And that could be because of the Speedy Bandolier 25. Um, I just really appreciate that, that bandolier strap. My goodness, I never thought that I would say that. I never thought that those words would come out of my mouth, but <laughs> here we are. <laughs> uh, but anytime I wanna go for a monogram bag, I always end up going for that Speedy. I mean, I still love this. I love the colors. I like the patina that it's gotten. And um, I think this will definitely be, uh, there, was a, there was a time when I thought about selling it, but there's no way that's gonna happen, no way. I'm just going to keep it, it's going to be a memento. I might end up uh, using it for like travel, like if we go out on weekends or what have you, but I think it's beautiful. I love the colors, and uh, even though like my new Mon Monogram piece, the little card holder, does have that beautiful Bordeaux, and I like the way that it complements um, the, the Blanc with the Monogram, I mean, this fuchsia, <laughs> I can't deny the hot pink, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's definitely me. And even though I don't use it as much, it still brings me a huge, huge smile to my face whenever I see it. So it's one of those bags I don't use too often, but um, there's no way this will ever this will ever end up leaving my collection. But putting the initials of your children on there, I think that is so, so sweet. Like I said, it makes it even more special and it's a bag that uh, now has a lot more of a story to it, you know? So that way in 10, 15 years time, who knows, maybe you can give it to one of them. But uh, fantastic question, hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from IN, what are your thoughts on the Louis Vuitton Sienna PM? I have the Pochette Matisse and the Speedy Bandolier 25 in Damia Ben and in Monogram. I'm looking to add another crossbody and I can't decide between the Sienna PM and the Hermes Evelyn 29. Um, all right, so both of them are great. My thoughts on the Sienna PM, I really like it. I love the fact that it's structured, it's carefree, it's also very versatile because as you mentioned, not only can you use it as a cross body bag, but you can also use it on the crook of your arm or as a hand carry bag, so I do appreciate that aspect of it. You have a little bit more play. Uh, now when it comes to the Hermes Evelyn, uh, personally, I think that this is a beautiful, beautiful bag, and uh, I know that a lot of people that own this bag, whichever version they end up going for, they swear by how comfortable it is, to the point where you can end up fitting quite a bit in there, and it doesn't feel like you're carrying around a brick, and you can wear it for hours on end. Uh, so I would say that if you want to add uh, brand variety to your collection when it comes to crossbody bags, I would go for the Evelyn, uh, but if you like that structured uh, silhouette that the Sienna has, and you like the fact that it's, um, 
carefree because of the Damia Ben, then I would end up going for that one. But the Sienna is uh, very similar to the Speedies. And since you already have canvas with the Pochette Matisse and you have it with the Speedy Bandoliers, as you mentioned, um, like I said, maybe by going for something a little bit different, all leather and going for the Hermes would be uh, a great way to go. But either way, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. Uh, I mean, the colors that come in the Evelyn are just gorgeous. I've always said that Hermes has some of the most beautiful colors that they offer for their um, for their leathers. So yeah, so if you want to add color, if you want to go for something a little bit more comfortable, maybe not as structured as the Sienna, I would go for the Evelyn. But if you like that structure, if you like that carefree canvas, then I would go for that one. I don't know if that helps or not, but uh, hopefully that was able to answer your question. Next question from Shirong Danielson. Would you normally remove the wash slash material tag in the shawl or scarf? If yes, will that have an impact on the pre-love market? Uh, this is a great, great question, and personally, I wouldn't, uh, just because you do run the risk of it unraveling, or it can wear a little bit quicker, um, you know, to the point of almost fraying if the tag is removed incorrectly, so you do run that risk, and I do imagine that it would have an impact on the pre-love market, just because I think that the following person that gets that item they want to be able to identify the type of material that it is. That way they know how to care for it, whether that's taking it into the dry cleaners or whether that's something that they can uh, clean themselves. Uh, so I know that some people have removed it just because they don't like the way that the tags feel when they put their shawls or their scarves on their neck. Um, but uh, I have seen them on the pre-love market and sometimes those end up uh, going for a little bit less. So if it's something that you think that you'll end up keeping forever, no problem, and the tags do bother you, then I would end up going for it, but just be very careful how you remove it. Uh, but if there's the slightest possibility that you might end up reselling it in the future, I would just refrain from doing it because as, as I said before, I do feel that it does have an impact on the pre-love market. So fantastic question, hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Debbie Wilkes. How do you feel about exotic leathers? Would you ever own an exotic leather handbag? If so, what color? Um, all right, so exotic leathers, I can appreciate them. Some of them are incredibly beautiful, and I know that some of the combinations are very, very rare. Uh, so I know a lot of people love them, but unfortunately, they are not for me. Um, like I said, I can appreciate them, but I don't know if it's necessarily the leathers that they use on the bags that kind of freaks me out a little bit. I know that might sound so stupid to some of you guys, but um, whether it's ostrich or, any, like I said, any type of exotic leather, I just don't like the feel of it. You know, and even as I'm sitting here talking to you about it, I kind of, I have like the sensation on my hands and I feel like my hands are sweating. I know that sounds so gross, but <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like, I just, I can't get over that, you know, but, um, like I said, some of them are very, very beautiful and a lot of people love them, you know, and they're, um, they're great additions to their collections, but, um, they, uh, <laughs> they are definitely not for me. So fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from Lizette Garcia, if you sold all your luxury goods to help in all caps to fund one thing, what would that be? Uh, this is an awesome question and um, I kind of see it I kind of see it two ways. If I had kids, I would sell my entire collection so that I can fund um, their tuition. Uh, you know, if they're going to college or whatever the case may be, absolutely hands down that I would, that's what I would do. And if I didn't have children, uh, I would end up doing a family vacation home. Obviously, I wouldn't be able to pay for it all, but uh, I think it would be really great to have a place where we can all come together, where we can all hang out, we can all enjoy it. I think it'd be really, really nice. So if I had kids, it would be for their education and if it was, um, you know, if it wasn't in the cards for us to have children, then it would be a family vacation home, hands down. But I would love to know if you guys were to sell all of your luxury goods, what's the one thing that you would help fund with, uh, with that money? Let us know in the comment section down below if you want to share. But fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Uh, all right, you guys, so now for the handbag of the week, and I was thinking, I'm just gonna throw this out there, let me know what you guys think. I was thinking about having the handbag of the week be a weekly series, like on Wednesdays, like handbag Wednesdays or whatever, and have the video be like three minutes, four minutes long tops, nothing longer, and that way we can get a little bit more feedback on the bags that we feature. You know, we can get a little bit more uh, people telling us how they wear, or if there's a lot of pros, if there's a lot of cons or what have you, so that that way it might make um, research a little bit easier. I don't know, but um, 
That's just something that was kind of flying out, uh, flying around in my head. Let me know if that's something that you would prefer for me to do instead of necessarily tacking it on to Minx Monday. Um, all right, but back to the handbag of the week. Oh man, this bag has totally taken me by storm, and that is the Louis Vuitton City Steamer. This bag, my goodness, this bag, I've always appreciated it, but I didn't really have the opportunity to, to play with it as much as I did this past weekend when I went to Louis Vuitton. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I posted a picture of it. And I love the fact that you have a few different sizes to choose from. And for the price point that they have, I mean, you have this beautiful all leather handbag. I think that it offers quite a bit for the price point, but man, it is versatile. It is structured. It, I mean, just the details of this bag are gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I fell in love. I felt like I was just kind of wiping off the drool whenever I saw this bag, you know? So the fact that you have a little bit more sizes to choose from, I love, and you also have a few different textures that you can choose from as well, but it is just such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bag. And I like it so much that I added it to the wish list, <laughs> the never ending wish list. Uh, so yeah, the city steamer, gorgeous, gorgeous bag. I would love to know if you guys have it. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let us know what you think. And I also wanted to throw this out there that I may or may not have purchased the Pollen <laughs> number one mini <laughs> last week. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, after I got off the video with you guys, I couldn't stop thinking about it and I just went ahead and put check out on that cart. So by the time that you guys see this video, I will have it in my hot little hands, but I am so excited for it. And uh, I was going to do a reveal on Instagram, but I'm wondering if I should do like an unboxing on my channel. Uh, let me know if that's something that would interest you as well. But either way, I'm so excited about the Pollen number one mini. Um, all right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You had some awesome questions this week. Uh, for this week's lineup, I know that I failed you guys last week with a get ready with me on Saturday. I had something come up, so unfortunately I didn't get the opportunity to film it, but I should be able to do that this week. And I have another video, um, I have another video planned um, it's something, it's something different, you know, than what I've done before, but it's somewhat similar. I don't know. I'm not trying to add like mystery to it or anything like that. Uh, but it should be up either Friday, uh, Thursday or Friday. So it'll be later on in the week, but, uh, regardless, I will have more videos for you guys. But again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. It's getting so much harder to say that. But again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.